now I have run out of the SpongeBob title card, so I move to the next thing SpongeBob wise. Day five. Give it up for day five of AP Physics One review, where we look at simple harmonic motion. So review of periodic motion features. Amplitude A is the maximum distance of the object from its equilibrium position. If no friction is present, a object oscillates between the positions x plus x equals plus a and x equals minus a. The period is the time it takes to complete one full cycle of motion represented right here. As we can see, we've completed one full motion from one crest to another crest. Measured in seconds, but it is not the same as time. It is a measurement of the time required to complete one full cycle, but it's not technically the same as time. It's weird to think about. It's not really too useful, but it's a detail that always seems to people love to highlight for some reason. Frequency is the number of cycles completed per second and is the reciprocal of our period. It's measured in hertz. hertz. One hertz is equal to the reciprocal of one second. And again, our equation of motion is x equals a cosine 2 pi frequency times our time. Okay, so t equals uh, 1 over f or 2 pi over our angular frequency, which is a very um, subtle but um, not very common thing that appears in the exam, hence it's not really worth worrying about too much, okay? So again, in order to determine x equals a cosine 2 pi ft, you need to know a and f, or to graph from this, you graph a and then you figure out your period, a t from f, okay? Simple spring motion, key features, Hooke's law, the elastic force is proportional to displacement from equilibrium, fs is proportional to x. The constant of proportionality, k, we'll cover in a second, is uh, um, what we call the spring constant. So at equilibrium position, we have zero force and zero acceleration. So at this point, we are at our maximum speed, okay? Um, because we've reached a point where our, where our acceleration has pushed us and accelerated us as much as we can without the acceleration starting to pull us back. So at equilibrium, we're going to have maximum speed. At maximum compression um, slash stretch, we're going to have our maximum force slash acceleration because our displacement from the equilibrium is greatest, okay? Um, but we have zero speed because we're going to be changing direction from heading, say, this way to now being pulled back towards the equilibrium position. Um, the period depends on strictly mass m and spring constant k, so displacement does not matter, okay? Um, again, you can think about it this way, that when you pull it further and increase the place displacement, that also increases the acceleration, which compensates for the displacement. So the only things that affect this um, period are the mass and spring constant. Mass is directly proportional, a.k.a. you have more inertia, so it'll take more time to complete a cycle. K, um, there's an inverse relationship because if you increase the spring constant, a.k.a. the stiffness of the spring, that means you're going to have a greater force and thus greater acceleration acting, so your object's going to return to equilibrium faster. Hence, you're going to have less, um, a smaller period. Spring constant, again, quantifies um, the stiffness of the spring and is a material property, so it does not change just like the coefficient of friction. Pendular motion, key features. At equilibrium position, we have maximum speed. Again, um, that's because our gravitational force has acted as much as it can to pull us down. And um, once we pass equilibrium position, that gravitational force is going to start accelerating to trying to pull us back down. So right here, we'll have maximum speed. We have zero tangential acceleration. There is, however, centripetal acceleration as pendulum is in circular motion. Okay, So at the bottom, we have zero uh, tangential acceleration because this component, mg sine theta, is going to be... Um, zero at the bottom, okay? However, we do have circular motion, so we still have centripetal acceleration because we have this mg cosine theta and we have this ft that's always acting. At the amplitude, which is our maximum angular displacement from equilibrium, we have zero speed, but we have maximum tangential acceleration because we are turning around and because mg sine theta is at its maximum value, okay? Um, the period depends strictly on L on the length L and the acceleration due to gravity. The displacement does not matter. Angle theta has no effect on our period. Okay? Um, again, L has a direct relationship with the pendulum period. If we increase L, it's going to take more time to complete a cycle, swing back and forth, so the period will increase. While um, for G, 
g is an inverse relationship because if we increase our acceleration due to gravity, that increases this mg sine theta component, which means that we're going to have a higher tangential acceleration, and thus we're going to complete a period in a shorter amount of time. Periodic motion analysis, okay? So at equilibrium position right here, we have zero force and zero acceleration. Um, we can see that because we're neither concave up nor concave down, so we have zero acceleration. But we have our maximum speed because our slope right here is the greatest, okay? At maximum compressions, um, we have our maximum force and acceleration. We can see that because we have um, the concavity is a maximum at our amplitudes. Um, so thus acceleration is also the greatest, okay? So this is where we have stretching um, or compression at the amplitudes right here. Um, where this would refer to stretching and this would refer to compression. This right here um, will be a positive acceleration because you're concave up, while this right here will be a negative acceleration because you're concave down. And again, we have zero speed because we are briefly changing direction at these points. And then the red and green just highlight the, the green and red bullet points right here. Energy in harmonic and periodic systems, in general, kinetic is maximum and potential is minimum at equilibrium, again, because speed is maximum at equilibrium, um, while our displacement is zero at equilibrium, and potential energy in these harmonic systems depends on displacement. Um, while that's reversed at equilibrium, kinetic is minimum at, excuse me, I should not say equilibrium, that should say um, the amplitude. So kinetic is minimum, potential is maximum at the amplitudes, because potential depends on the amplitudes, while kinetic is going to be a minimum because our um, speed is zero at the amplitudes. For springs, it can have both gravitational and elastic potential energy, aka if you hang a spring vertically, you will have gravitational potential energy. And then for potential and then for pendulums, you can only have gravitational potential energy. If given length L and amplitude theta, um, the equation for your um, potential energy is going to be mgl1 minus cosine theta, again because our change in height is going to be L times 1 minus cosine theta. We won't cover that derivation here as we covered it in the appropriate unit for unit 5. And then our equation for spring potential energy is 1 half kx squared. At the amplitude, um, if you pull it back to an amplitude A, your maximum energy in the system is going to be um, the maximum potential energy since all your energy is in the form of potential. So your maximum energy in the system will be 1 half k a squared for a the amplitude. All right, uh, just checking to see how many more sides we had to go through here. So energy in harmonic and periodic systems, again, they're going to be sinusoidal if it's a function of time um, because as time goes on, your um, speed will increase and decrease, or your speed will decrease and increase and decrease and increase. So as a result, your kinetic and potential energy will be sinusoidally continuing, uh, continually changing, increasing and decreasing as a function of time. So as a result, you're going to end up with a sinusoidal function where your kinetic energy will start out right here. It's going to be zero since you always pull, pull the spring or pendulum back first and then release it since thus it has all potential energy. So all potential energy and zero kinetic energy initially and then it follows a sinusoidal pattern, okay? Um, we can see right here that, um, say, after a full period, okay, we've come back to our original starting position, so we have zero kinetic energy and all potential energy. We can see that at the quarter intervals, that switches, okay? Remember, because the quarter intervals, this represents where we're at equilibrium. This represents where we are now um, at the other end of the amplitude spectrum. Now we're back to equilibrium, and now we've returned to our original position. Total mechanical energy remains the same throughout. If we have a damp spring, energy loss occurs over time. So we're going to look at a sinusoidal decay, what we call an exponentially decaying sinusoidal function. That's a fancy word. You don't need to know that. You just need to know a concept. So our graph will look like this. And then lastly, if we have energy as a function of position, we're going to have parabolic graphs because we're going to be graphing as a function of x squared, that displacement from equilibrium. So we're going to end up with kinetic energy starting at zero at the amplitudes because we have zero speed in the amplitudes. It reaches a maximum at the equilibrium and then the potential energy will be a reflection while our total energy remains the same throughout. And that is um, our summary for unit five for waves.